Hello, in this lecture, we're going to continue on smaller type of problems. These are types of problems that could be used in a multiple choice type problem setting. So these could be used to study for multiple choice type questions because they're going to use the smaller setting, which means we're going to restrict some information and have less information when working problems in this format. Now I'm going to have this over here on this side and I'm going to take a look at the trial balance on this side. And the only reason this, this is an unrelated trial balance to this problem, but the, the idea being here that it would be a good idea to have the trial balance open or a book open or some kind of cheat sheet. I think the tri a trial balance like this is a good cheat sheet because it'll show you the debits and the credits and what type of accounts are debit account accounts and what type of accounts are credit balance accounts. So if you're able to have something open, I recommend having some type of trial balance open. So the, this problem here, we have a company's ledger account and their end of period balance before closing entries are posted below. What amount will be posted to the capital in the process of closing the income summary account? Okay, so we're gonna, they're asking for this journal entry, the third journal entry of our four step process of closing out the, uh, the, the income summary account and closing and doing our closing process. Remember that we're gonna close the income out first and then we're gonna close all the expenses to the income summary and then we're gonna close the income summary to the capital account. So note they give us this list, it's not in terms of debits and credits, so we got to kind of interpret what the debits and credits are and and then work this through this. So we could do this with journal entries if we choose to. So let's try it that way. We're basically going to do these journal entries. So first thing, the first journal entry has to do with, of course, the revenue. That's the first thing we get rid of. And again, we don't know whether the revenue is a debit or credit here, but uh, we know on our trial balance over here, it has a credit balance. We're going to close that out to the um, income summary account. So therefore, it has a credit balance. So what we're going to do is going to close it out. Therefore, we're going to do the opposite thing to it. We're going to debit revenue. So the first entry to close this out would be a debit to revenue of 31000 and a credit to something, the something being the new income summary clearing account. So uh, we got the clearing account over here. We're going to call it income summary. This is our four-step process, first step of the four-step process. Now, if, if we thought about uh, a trial balance for the income summary, this is our account, this is our T here. We're gonna have a T account, the, you know, on this side, this is gonna be underlined, and then our T is over here. Our T account looks like this, and we just credited it. So that's on the credit side of our T account, like our GL account, in the income summary. So we have a credit of this amount here, I'm going to make them negative when it's a credit. You don't have to do that, but uh, that's how I'm going to represent the credits. And you just indent this. Okay, the next entry is going to have to do with the expense accounts. So these are all expense accounts here. Once again, they don't tell us if they're debit or credit accounts, but we know that all expense accounts over here are debits. So these are all debits. We need to make those go down to zero. How do we make something go down? We do the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a credit. So I'm just going to copy all these and this would be a credit. So I'm going to skip a line and skip another line because the credits should go on the bottom and there those are. And I'm going to just say this is a negative of these. I'm just bringing those numbers down. So I'm crediting all these. I'm going to represent credits with a negative. You don't have to do that, but that's what I'm going to do. And then we need a debit of something to the income summary. We're closing out the expenses to the income summary. And if we just add these up, this plus this plus this plus this adds up to 11 to 15. I'm going to do that with a formula instead of just typing it in there. I'm going to say negative sum of, and I'm going to add them up from the bottom because that thing's in the way or else you can just move this thing if you want. This plus this plus this plus this and enter. And so now the debits minus the credits equals zero. So that's going to be this journal. Now, if we look at what's in the income summary, we have the debit and the credit here. And if we had a balance account, then this is gonna be the balancing row. We have this in it at this time. Then we have this plus the debit and the credit. And that brings us to 19,785. Uh, That's where we're at at this point in time. What is that 19,785? That's net income because we closed out income expenses. That's what's in there now. Now we're gonna close out income from the income summary, net income being in the income summary, making this a zero and taking it to the capital account. So that's gonna be the journal entry that we're looking for here. So when we do that, then uh, we need to make this go down. It has a credit balance in it. Therefore, we're gonna do the opposite thing to it. So the income summary 
is going to be a debit. So I'm just going to copy that. We're going to debit the income summary for the amount that it's in there now, 19785, which is net income. And then we are going to credit something, and that something will be um, the capital account in this case. So I'm just going to call it capital. And that would be the process. Now, if you wanted to do this a bit more quickly than that, you could just recognize the fact that, of course, once we close out revenue and once we close out expenses to the income summary, what will be in income summary? The, the income summary will have net income in it. So the answer being, in this case, is that 19,785. We could come to that same conclusion by just trying to figure out what you know net income is, because we know what net income is going to be, and how are you going to calculate net income? It's revenue, and we could say the revenue is over here at this 31 less expenses, and we know that the expenses are here. So I'm just going to copy these. And I'll put them on the inside. This is what an income statement would generally look like, right? I'm put a colon here. And then I'm just going to sum up all the expenses equals the sum of the expenses. So this is total expenses. And that gives us net income. So net income equals the revenue less the sum of all the expenses. And that, once again, is going to be that 19785, 19785. That's going to be the journal entry to post out of the income summary to the capital account. The next one we have here at the beginning of the year, a company's balance sheet reported the following balances. We have assets of 215, liabilities 88.5, equity of 126.5. During the year, the company reported revenue 54.1, expenses 35.4. In addition, owner's withdrawals for the year total 23.6. Assume no other changes to owner's equity. The balance in the owner's equity account at the end of the year would be. So let's just do this more like a financial statement um, instead of doing it through journal entries. We'll just do it uh, as we would basically calculate the statement of equity where we would have basically uh, beginning capital, which they gave us in this case would be uh, 126, five. And that would go up by revenue. So then we have, well, let's just call it go up by net income. Net income being calculated as revenue minus expenses just like down here revenue minus expenses so they gave us those two numbers so we're just going to subtract those out so during the year they reported revenue equal to 54.1 less expenses of 35.4 and there we have that then the last piece to this is less the amount that the owner took out in the form of draws i'm just going to call them draws instead of withdrawals for make it a little faster here and then we have 23.6 so that's going to give us our ending capital at the end of the period. So that equals the capital we started with plus the net income, which would increase capital less the draws here. And that's going to give us the 121.6. A couple things to note here. Note that uh, the draws were actually greater than the net income. That's okay. You can't do that forever, of course. But we could do that in this case because we still had uh, income that was retained that's still in there and had accumulated from prior periods. Also note that there is sometimes that, that this, this capital account up here could be affected if there was other investments in here. Notice they, they told us in the problem that there were no other uh, activity in the capital account. What other activity could there be other than draws? Well, it could be that there was added investments. Hopefully that's not going to happen because they're drawing money out. Um, rather than putting more money in. So the next one we have at the beginning of the year, company balance sheet reports total assets of 294, total liabilities 113.5. During the year, the company reported revenues of 347, expenses of 268.5. Also owner withdrawals during the year totaled 70. Assuming no other changes, owner's capital, the, the balance and the equity account at the end of the year. So note what they did not give in this problem that we have seen in previous problems. They gave us the total assets, the total liabilities. They didn't give us the, the beginning equity. But we can figure that out with the accounting equation. So we're going to say assets. We, we need to first start off with the beginning equal liabilities. I'm just going to say plus equity or say owner's equity. That's our accounting equation. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. Now they gave us the assets here. So we're going to say the assets are 294000 equals the liabilities which they gave us of 1135 plus the equity that's the unknown that's x so first we got to get that beginning number x 
Therefore, we got to get rid of this uh, 1135 on both sides. I'm going to subtract from both sides 1135. On this side, I'm going to subtract from this side 1135. And then that will leave us with the one, uh, 294 plus the negative. It's going to be a subtraction problem, but in Excel, I'm saying plus the negative. So all I did was say this minus this gives us the uh, 185. That's what we have. That now equals, and then of course, uh, the liabilities, we just reduced that to zero. We took it down plus X. And of course, that's going to be the same thing as just the uh, 180 equals zero plus X. And if we rewrite that, we can say, well, if 185 equals X, then X equals the 185. And we know that X is equity equals the 18500. So now we have the beginning balance and we can do the same thing that we did in prior problems. We can say, well, how do you calculate equity at the beginning? Capital. And now we just figured that out to be the 180,500. Then we're going to put in net income. Net income is calculated to be revenue less expenses. So they're going to tell us what those are, hopefully, up here during the year company reported revenue. Revenue equals the 347,000 less expenses equaling 268.5. And then we're going to say, I think that's right. We're going to say this revenue equals the 347,000 minus the 268.5. That looks more right. And then we're going to say less draws. And draws happen to be 70,000. And that's going to be our ending capital. So any, so the capital then would be calculated as 180,500 plus the net income 78.5 minus the draws of 70,000. Next one says that after preparing the post, uh, posting the closing entries for revenue and expenses, the income summary has the debit balance of 32,000, the entry to close the income summary account. So this is the this is the only tricky thing about this is that they're kind of jumping into the third step of the four step process. And so we have to just basically realize we're kind of down here, meaning there's already something in the income summary. We did the first two steps. We closed out income to the income summary. We closed out all the expenses to the income summary. So what is in the income summary right now? Net income. And it's good to realize that because later on problems might start talking about the income summary being allocated to different partners. And we got to realize that the income summary is just basically the book's way or it's a lot of books way of saying uh, that's what net income is that we need to now allocate so that instead of calling it net income they'll call it what's in the income summary before we allocate it to partners and stuff like that so we know that uh, that's what needs to be allocated out that's kind of what's in net income in the income summary that we now need to put to the capital account so the income summary then would have a credit balance of net income in it and we would have to then debit it to make it go down. So we would debit the income summary for the amount in there of 32,000. And then we would credit the capital account. What would that do to the capital account? Increase it, which makes sense. So it's a credit balance. We're gonna credit it, doing the same thing to it, which would make it go up. This makes sense because uh, we, we owe the owner more money, of course, because the company made money and therefore owes it to the owner. Next one says, company accrued wages of 7,650 that were earned by employees unpaid at the end of 2014, assuming company uses reversing entries, provide entry for reversing the accrual wages at the beginning of 2015. So what happens? As of December, as of the cutoff date, these are, these are the adjusting entry process. We had to adjust wages because there were some wages where the employees were working, but the payday happened after the year end. And therefore, we had to recognize that we owed this amount of money before the year end, even though we're not paying them till after the year end. So if we if we think about that, uh, let's think about what that journal entry would be and then what the reversing would be. So if we think about the adjusting entry, adjusting entries always have a balance sheet account and an income statement account. And we know that the income statement account here is going to be wages expense because that's what's going to be related to wages or something or salaries expense or something like that. So we're going to say, OK, it's the uh, wages or salaries or whatever related to payroll expense is going to be debited six five 
7650. Why is it debited? Because expenses are always debited. So the expenses are always, for the most part, go up. Obviously not in the closing process when we're closing the whole thing up, but generally expenses only go up, the employees don't pay us. And then we're gonna credit something. And so the credit then would be something in the upper half of, in the balance sheet portion up here, and that would be wages payable. And that's a liability representing that we owe money to the employees that we're not going to pay until payday happens, which isn't going to happen until next year after the cutoff date, after we make our financial statement. So we need to make this journal entry so that our financial statements are right on an accrual basis as of the cutoff date on 12-31-2014. Uh, but we don't want to leave this payable on the books uh, until the payday happens, because if we do that, then the payable department has to take into account our accrual and we're assuming these are different departments so we don't want the payroll we want the payroll department to basically be on their kind of cash basis or on their on their time schedule not on our accrual time schedule so we are going to make it easy on the payroll by simply reversing this as of the day after the financial statement date so we're just going to take this exact journal entry and just reverse it so we're going to say all right well we'll just uh, copy and paste we're going to debit the 7650 and we're going to credit wages expense and that will bring the payable back down to zero and it'll actually have a negative expense and again this should look funny we shouldn't be crediting wages uh, you know wages expense why would we do that and and again it it won't make sense until the payroll posts their half of the payroll because whatever the payroll is uh, they're going to post it for the time period of 2014 and 2015 and post an expense for that entire time period, which is going to be something larger than this 7000 Let's say it was like 10000 And if it was, if the entire payroll was 10000 after they post the payroll, the 10000 less the 7650 is will then be correct as of that point in time after they post the payroll. So what we're doing is, is not making the payroll department deal with our uh, adjusting entry.